Hey guys, Long there, and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today, we're predicting where every single club in League One will finish. Wow, there's some massive teams in this league, including Bolton Wanderers, and the season is underway, isn't it, Theo? Yeah, some massive teams. We're going for every single one. What are we starting with? We're starting with the light target of 10,000. You can't just throw it out like that. I did not expect that from you, Thog. Then listen, if the League One fans show it, it's a massive league, get 10K likes, and let's start with that Cretan Stanley. Let us do that. Who are they? Now, last season they were 11th. They play at the Crown Ground, which is the smallest stadium in the league with a 5,000 capacity. So it's a small club, no offence. Right. But you know what? They've kept most of the squad together, Theo. I was going to say they were going to survive, but then I watched them on the first week and I just thought, shaky, defensively, a bit of a mess. I, listen, I want James Trafford, the loanee from Man City. He's gone out there for a year to do really well. I want him to have an exciting year. I think he's going to learn a lot. Stanley's strength, looking elsewhere, isn't good enough at relegation. <laughs> wow, that is very harsh. I think they'll be all right. Now, there's some good teams come into this league last season. Yeah. Do you know what? 16th place, you're going to be all right. Well, if Bishop and Charles get off the mark, I think 16th place is where they could be looking. They've got Joe Pritchard as well, ex-Bolton. He's a talented player last year, so good luck to them. AFC Wimbledon now 19th in the league last season with the cheapest squad in the whole league, but they've lost Joe Piggott, Theo, haven't they, with his 20 goals from last season? I just want to clap AFC Wimbledon, you know, it's a very young squad and they went out against Doncaster Rovers away from home different ground than what they're used to and it's a young group of lads l lack of experience really and they got a big 2-1 win that is true Theo but don't judge the season on one game I think they're gonna go down I'm afraid 22nd place I'm gonna be positive here I think they're staying up 20th well done and now it's our team Bolton Wanderers we were promoted last season third place in division two new owners a great gaffer in Ian Ever, and we're playing some lovely football, aren't we, Theo? We are, but we're conceding too much. Yeah. I don't want to see us concede three goals <laughs> every week because my heart will not be able to handle it. I thought we played very well against MK Dons when we played forward with Bakayoko, the new signing. I think if he could play like that every week, yeah. we're going to be incredible. Sheehan, the attacking midfielder we got from Newport, the, uh, the Welsh guy, yes. the free kick was absolutely stupendous. He plays in Bruno's position, he looks like him, and he takes set pieces like him. Bolton have got our very own Bruno. I think we could push for playoffs, but we do need to improve in that goalkeeper position. Agreed, Fear. Now, it's very difficult to go up from Division 2 and go straight up from there. So yeah. you you know what? I think this will be a season of consolidation. I think we'll be top 10 just ninth place. Yeah, I'm going to say we only just miss out on playoffs by the skin of our teeth in seventh, which is heartbreak. But I'm just going to be honest. I don't want to be biased here, but we're both saying no playoffs, no promotion for us. And that's just our honest opinion. I really want us to. But I, and I, if we get momentum, I think we can. Burton Albion, now the Brewers, and last season they were 16th, and they've yeah. got a great gaffer in Jimmy Floyd. Hasselbank, ex Leeds, the Dutch lad. And they've also brought in Cameron Borthwick Jackson, Theo. Mm. Now, he's an England youth player, used to be at Man United. I mean, he could be good for the team. He could be decent. Listen, I think they're going to improve on 16th and, and 13th this year. Their team looks slightly better. Akin's still knocking about, and they brought in an attacking midfielder from Guimarães. I'm going to sort of agree, Theo, 15th place. Decent. Improvement. Cambridge United promoted in second place last season, and it's the first time in 20 years, Theo, that they've been in the third tier. How are they going to do? Well, that's a big story for them. The problem is they sold Paul Mullin yeah. to a National League club. The man that scored over 20 goals last season, their star player, with him and Houlihan. Theo, and they sell him to a club in the league below they were in last year. I don't know the story behind that. 31 league goals he got. They named the stand after him. <laughs> I know. And they've sold him to... I, honestly, I could go on about it all day. I just don't know what the plan is now for Cambridge. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put Cambridge in 23rd. But I love your home shirt. <laughs> and Theo, I'm just going to agree with you. 23rd place, relegation. But Dad, Wes Houlihan loves a Guinness. 39 years old and still going strong. Brilliant. Charlton Athletic of London, now seventh place last season. They've got Nigel Adkins in charge. Now, he's gained promotion from this level with Southampton and Scunthorpe back in the day. But Theo, what worries me is they've only got 19 players at the moment. Is that too thin a squad? Yeah, it is. They need to get some signings in. And I think a club like Charlton deserve to be back in the championship soon enough. I think it'll come down to playoffs. In my head, I see Bolton and Charlton battling it out for playoffs. It that sixth position. And I think Charlton will edge it on us, which is unfortunate. But we know Stockley can be a threat in this division. We know they've still got a decent team out of the 19 that are in there. And, you know, I, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, but the thing about Stockley, Theo, he was much more prolific in Division 2 and in the National League. I wonder whether he can score goals at this level. 
I think he can, and I think he might be a problem, but let's see what Cheltenham do this year. Good luck, but sick for me. And I agree, Theo. Playoff place, sixth. Cheltenham Town, and they won League Division 2 last season. Well done, lads. They've kept most of their permanent players. Yeah. And you know what? On their day, they're very well drilled, aren't they? Dangerous from set pieces. They've got the long throw specialist, but can they stay up, Theo? Remember when they played against City in the Cup game last yeah, year? Yeah. I thought it was really good. I thought they played pretty yeah, well they there. they did, yeah. And I watched their first game of the season, too. Very, you know, they don't keep much of the ball. They play some good football, and I thought they were good on their first day, but I'm not sure if that's going to continue throughout the season. So, unfortunately, I think they're just about going to go down. It's very difficult, but I'm sorry, guys, but best of luck. Yeah, they've only ever spent four seasons at this level, Theo. They are a small club, no offence, and I agree with you. 21st place. Crew Alexandra now 12th last season and they had a really good end to the season. 11 points in the last five games. They've added to the squad, Theo, but it's a fairly small budget. Can yeah. they survive in this league? Well, Crew have a young squad, very good academy, and they seem to be our bogey team. Every time we play against them, they seem to get a result, which is really frustrating. I think they're going to end mid-table and around 15th. Best of luck. Wow, they've got Will Jaskalainen from Bolton. Yeah. You might know the surname. And they brought in Chris Long from Motherwell. Mm. Are you not going to do the joke? She's all right, thanks. <laughs> no, they look shaky against Cholteneham, though. Yeah. That, that's the downfall for them. And if they can improve that and, you know, get back in the training ground and work on making sure they can cut those errors out, then they'll be all right. But I think a mid-table finish. And I think 17th. I think they'll be all right. Doncaster Rovers, 14th place. Richie Wellens in charge. He's a bit of a Doncaster legend. What worries me, Theo, they play some nice football, but mm. it's a bit of a thin squad. And I'm yeah. worried if they get injuries, they might drop like a stone. It's going to be difficult for them this year. The way they threw away that lead, you know, in the first game of the season against Wimbledon, they were favourites, they were at home, and they bottled it. And that's simply not good enough. You know, it's difficult to judge where they're going to end this season when I watch that. They might have injuries as well. I'm going to go 14th. And I'm going to agree 14th. Fleetwood Town, they were 15th last season. Simon Grayson's in charge. He's a yeah. good manager at this level. He's good defensively, isn't he, Theo? But what worries me, maybe, is where do the goals come from? Yeah, good point. I think with Simon Grayson at the wheel, and they're staying up, they've got a full English side, which is pretty yeah. funny as well. Um, I'm going to go 17th for them this year. So they're staying up pretty comfortably. Yeah, keep an eye on Ryan Edmondson. He's coming in from Leeds. He's 20 years old. Can he impress Bielsa and co? I think they will be 20th. Ooh, staying up though. But that is just surviving. It is. Gillingham 10th last season and Steve Evans is a good gaffer on a small budget. Now, pre-season was disrupted by COVID, wasn't yeah. it, Theo? That's going to be big for them. Uh, like, you know, when you have a lack of pre-season, it's basically you're working into your start of the season trying to get things clicking and that's not good enough. So that's really put them down for me. I think they will survive, but it's going to be a long year. 19th. Wow, John Akinde is there. He's got 151 good career plan. goals. I think he might bag a few. Mm. I think they'll finish 12th. Wow. Pretty positive. Ipswich Town were ninth last mm. season, played 46, scored 46, conceded 46. So every game was kind of a one-all draw. So for me, what they have to do is find 20 to 25 goals. Now, what they've got, Theo, new owners, yep. new CEO, 20 new players. Oh, my goodness, they've spent some money, haven't they? But 20 new players doesn't always work. When you yeah. put a bunch of new lads together, they need time to click. Have they had that? Uh, that's a tough one, Theo, because I don't think they'll start very well. But they have brought in the likes of Joe Piggott. I mean, he's yeah. a goal machine at this level. The question is, can they gel before about October, November? Well, they didn't start that well. They drew to Morecambe. They yeah. definitely should have won that game. The fact they conceded two goals to Morecambe, who in my eyes are definitely going down, simply not good enough. And it shows the time is needed for the players to gel a little bit more. The likes of Connor Chaplin, Macaulay Bond. These guys shouldn't be in League One. They should be in the Championship, in my opinion. If they start clicking, Ipswich will get automatic promotion. I'm putting them in second place. I'm assuming that this is gonna work. They've thrown a lot of money at the team. It's the second most expensive squad in the league. They're gonna win the league, first place. No, yes. you've dropped the first place. Ipswich are gonna win the league. Big statement made from Thog Dad. I kind of agree in second. Lincoln City were fifth last season and a massive shout out to Michael Appleton. Of course he had testicular cancer. He's over that. He's back at the wheel. That is brilliant. A great football and human story. But how are Lincoln going to do this season, Theo? They play some good football, don't they? Yeah, they do. I really like the look of Cohen Bramall on his debut. I think he's got a lot of pace down that left side. He really was a threat against Gillingham. And I seriously think he could have a good year. We all know his history about Arsenal and then leaving and kind of the whole story about he was expected to be this wonder kid and it never really fell out to be. 
Yeah, now they've lost George Grant, haven't they? Yeah. There's some goals lost there, but they've got Liam Bridka, and I like this guy. That's their captain here. Used to be at Bolton. I really rate this lad. Well, he adds to a strong midfield, but do they have enough in attack? Let's find out. I'm going to go mid-table for Lincoln, really. I'm going to put them just to miss out on playoffs in ninth. Yes, and I kind of agree, Theo. I've gone for 11th place. Milton Keynes, Dons now, they were 13th last season, but yeah. they've lost Cameron <laughs> Jerome and Scotty Fraser. That's 27 goals that have gone, Theo. Can they survive? Well, to make up for that, they've got a front two of Mo Aisa and Troy Parrott, and yeah. I think that's brilliant. We saw it against Bolton, they scored three goals, so I don't think goals would be a problem, <laughs> folks, Dad. I would say playoffs, but I just think the rest of the squad really let them down. There was a few errors made where... Doyle should have scored, yeah. um, and we did make the most of one of them. And uh, listen, I think MK Don's good up front. The rest of the team is lacking, so I'm going to put them in 11th place this season. Yes, good luck to Troy Parrott, 19 years old, rated at three or four million quid. The Spurs lad, I think overall, MK Don's will be mid-table 13th. And now for Morecambe of Lancashire. There, they had a great end to last season, won six of the last seven games, and went up through the playoffs. Yeah. But you know what, Theo? They've got a small budget. It's all about the loan signings, isn't it? Can they stay up? I'm going to put them in 24th because their squad just doesn't compete. Yeah, I tell you what, last season we probably underestimated Morecambe in our predictions. I hate to look back, but having said that, you look at the squad, you look at the story, 24th. I hope I'm wrong. I hope yeah. I don't get roasted when I go back to Lancaster, but I think you might be well, bottom of this league. Well, they usually overperform our predictions, so we could be having a shocker, but we'll find out soon. Oxford United were sixth last season. They've been in the playoffs. Two seasons running. Yeah. But they've also had a bit of a COVID scare recently. 12 players self isolating. Yep. So it's hard to call this one, isn't it? They've got Matty Taylor up front, of course, 18 goals yeah. last season. So they're going to be all right. But I think they might drop a little this season. James Henry and Brannigan is a very good midfield duo as well. For yes. this league. Yeah, I'm impressed by that. I'm thinking top 10, Theo. I'm thinking 10th place. I'll put them 12th. Wouldn't surprise me if they had higher though. Plymouth Argyle were 18th last season, but they lost the last four games of the season. And of course they... <laughs> Sorry. And of course they lost <laughs> yesterday. So Pie Face's team are bottom of the league there. Oh, Pie Face is giving me the sneezes. Bloody hell. <laughs> no, I, I wish the best for him. But um, yeah, it was not a great way to start, was it? Losing 2-0 to Rotherham. I hope they do well in League One and I hope they can build on it. But I'm going to put them in 18th. Yes, I kind of agree 19th, but mm. the problem being conceding goals. 80 goals conceded last season. Only wow. one team did worse. Portsmouth of the South Coast next. They were 8th last season, but their gaffer, Danny Cowley, he's good, isn't he, Theo? Yeah, a good manager, first full season. How do you think he'll do? Well, I think he'll do all right. It's an interesting club, this, because you've got a billionaire owner, Michael Eisner, yeah. but they're running the club in a sustainable way, so they've really cut the wage bill over recent months. They have made some exciting signings, but I think some more are needed for the door. I think you're getting fourth place. Wow, that is a big call. Now, they've had a good pre-season. I get a good feeling about this club. It's a big club. Yeah. Fourth place there. Good luck, guys. Rotherham were relegated from the championship in 23rd last season. Apparently, the mood in the camp wasn't very good. Mm. But how are they going to do at this level, Theo? Well, the mood in the camp is very good after a great 2-0 win over Plymouth. And one man that always seems to score when I watch him is Ladapo. Yeah. He scored against Bolton in the past. And he scored last week. I think he'd have a very good year up top. Maybe get a decent amount of goals. Him and Smith have to do a big job. But if things start to knock and they gain a bit of momentum... I think Rotherham are ending the playoffs, you know. I'll put them in fifth place. That is a big shout. Now, they've got a lad called Dan Barlasa. Now, yeah, he is midfielder. an England and Turkey youth international, rated at about a million quid. It's a good player. Ex-Newcastle. So, uh, I think Rotherham could do all right. I put them seventh. <laughs> to miss out playoffs? Yeah, sorry, so just. We've just gone through all their players. Surely you can back them. Seventh place. Ah. Oh. And now for Sheffield Wednesday, they were bottom of the championship last season, but only because of that six-point deduction. So off the field, there are problems. Yeah. But my goodness, they've got an expensive squad. They brought in a lot of players. What the heck is going to happen here, Theo? They got a nil-nil draw against Charlton to kick things off. It's hard to judge how they'll do. Barry Bannon, Theo, is oh. the skipper. We remember him. He's a player, isn't he? Not just I remember him. When he was going on that run against Charlton last week, I glimpsed my eyes. I thought it was the Scottish Messi. I mean, he just ran past two players, took a shot to the bottom left corner. If that went in, 
I mean, I, I love the guy. He played for Bolton. He's yeah. one of my favourite players. Yes. I'm a central midfielder in Sunday League. I watch him. Yeah. And, it's, and it's crazy there is a guy that good in League One. Theo, I just hope things don't go wrong off the field. For example, I hope they pay their wages on time yeah. and don't get another points deduction. You know what? Second place, automatic promotion for Sheffield Wednesday. Seriously? Yes. Second place? Yes. If they do that in the first year with all these new signings, that would be incredible. One thing I have to say has been special is they took nearly 3,000 fans away to London in Charlton first game week more than anyone else in the league away from home that is an incredible support from Sheffield Wednesday down in the third tier so well done to you lot and if you were there you made a lot of noise I reckon they can get automatics but I've put them in third place because I think Ipswich and another team will edge it. We'll get onto that very soon. Shrewsbury Town, 17th last season and had a really poor end to that season. Steve Cottrell is the gaffer and he was off for six months with COVID. I mean, this damn pandemic has really caused damage to these Dad, teams there. How do you know about every single manager? I mean, honestly, I don't know how you come up with these facts. I mean, I have to say, um, all the best to him. I'm so yes, pleased he's recovered. Yeah. Josh Feller, ex-Bolton player as yeah. well on that team. I, I wish the best for them. I think it'll be slight improvement this year. <laughs> them in 16th. And I'm going to put them 18th. Good stuff. And now we've arrived at Sunderland fourth last season. They play at the Stadium of Light, which holds 49,000 people. This is a big club at the third tier. Last season, they only conceded 42 goals, quite good defensively. Yeah. And they only lost nine games, but they need to win more at home, don't they, Theo? I've not said my first place. Oh my goodness, surely it's not going to be Wigan. Well, we've got Wigan, we've got Wickham. Yeah. We've got a few teams to go through, but no, I think Sunderland, I mean, as you know, they're an exciting team. There's always something going on about them. Yeah. They've got an incredible support. Their first game ended very well against Wigan. They won 2 1, didn't they? With Ross Stewart up top, the signing from Ross County. He's a big lad. He scored from a corner on his, on his first game this season. And they brought in Alex Pritchard, Theo. There was one time when he was worth 11 million quid. They got him on a free. But I just wonder whether Sunderland have got to do more defensively this season. I think part of the reason Charlie White scored 26 goals last year was thanks to Aidan McGeady. He's an absolute star of a player in League One. And I think he'll do the same thing to provide for Ross Stewart and the rest of the Sunderland boys. And that reason is why I think the Mackhams will end in first place this wow, year. Wow, you've called it. I have, and I know I said this before, and I know Sunderland fallen away, and people always take the, make, the, make jokes. Listen, they're favourites for a reason, because they've got one of the best squads in the league, and it started very positive, and I think they'll keep that up. They've got a great support behind them, Best of luck to Sunderland. They've got a brilliant support. This is a very special club. It means so much to the town. It does. But you know what? I'm going to say fifth place, Theo. Fifth? Playoffs. Are you mugging us off? No. I th Bloody I'm gonna be hell. Real. I think in previous videos, Theo, in previous seasons, I've said they'll come first and I've been wrong. Yeah. Well, I've done that too. But I'm backing them this time because they're favourites by far. They've got a great squad. Let's see if they can secure the bag. Wigan Athletic now last season, they were 20th, but it wasn't about the football. It was yeah. about a club that nearly disappeared. Thankfully, they didn't. They've got new owners and they're splashing the cash. How's it going to go this season? They've got loads of new debutants. And that's why I think they should have taken that Sunderland game with a pinch of salt. Because when you're starting that many new boys, it's not going to link straight away, especially by one of the best teams in the league. So... Definitely going to build on it. They've got new ownership. It's looking more positive for Wigan. Charlie White's come in. Ben Amos, he's a good keeper. We yeah. remember him at Bolton. You know what? I think it's going to gel. Maybe not at first, but maybe by November, December, it's going to come together third place. You think we're going to come in yes, third? Yes, third place. That is mental. I don't think it's going to gel. Look, I remember Bolton in our first season. You know, it takes a while for things to really get together when we had all those new yes. signings. And especially in a league that's so difficult. The amount of big teams we've got in this league this year is incredible for a third tier. I'm putting them in eighth place, one below Bolton. I reckon they could do much better, like you predicted. But we'll find out. And finally, Wickham Wanderers relegated last season from the championship with the worst goal difference in the league, minus 30. But you know what? They usually do quite well at this level, don't they, Theo? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Wickham, they started off well with a winner over Accrington. They could build on from that and continue to get some good wins and end in a good position this table. Do I think they're going to get promoted? No. Let's see if Akin Fenwa still got it in him. Sam <laughs> Vokes was a very good yeah. signing. And they've still got some very good players with their manager who stayed... It could be a good year for them. I think it's going to be a good year. I think they're going to push for the playoffs, but just miss out eighth place. 
Yeah, I've gone for 10th. We somewhat agree. Just missing out on playoffs, but it could be. They could sneak in. You never know. And that's it. 24 teams in League One complete. Some massive teams in there. I can't wait to go to some of these away games, you know. some Visit some new grounds. Well, probably not new, but it's been a while. Because of COVID, they're basically new, aren't they? Absolutely. I'm sure we got some of those very wrong, but we tried our best. I'm just excited to get back in the stadiums. It's been great to see all of you lot attending games again. Ah, oh, it puts a smile on my face. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to keep up with all the Bolton League One English Football League content. And we'll see you all in a bit. Bye, guys. See ya.